Hello everyone, I'm Ernesto Padilla of Padilla Cigars and uh, our friends at Standard & Twain have asked us to do this uh, little video um, talking a little bit about uh, this cigar that you're smoking. I'm assuming that you probably smoked it uh, already at the uh, closed foot, little tail on the end, and this is our uh, Padilla Midnight in Paris is a small run that we did. And, uh, well, I guess let's get into it. Um, you wanted me to talk a little bit about the story of the cigar, and, and I guess I'll go into a little bit of the makeup of the cigar. Um, I was in Paris, uh, I don't know, a year and a half or almost two years ago on business, and um, I brought with me some different samples to smoke. And... Uh, Smoking a cigar in Paris is always a nice experience. Had a great time. Visited retailers there, distributor, and uh, had uh, some of these blends, different blends. And one of them I, I chose was uh, the one that you smoked or are going to smoke, the Midnight in Paris. This is a Nicaraguan uh, with a dark, as you can see, a mono grown in uh, Ecuador. And when I say habano, uh, let me just clarify because there's uh, Maduro. And within Maduro, there's a San Andreas wrapper, there's Broadleaf, there's Arapiraca, which is a Brazilian. And the Habano classification, there is what's called Habano. Habano 2000 was used 20-something uh, years ago and it had some issues. But then the classic uh, Cuban seeds, Corojo, Criollo, are also Habano type. Um, and there's Ecuador, Connecticut, or uh, uh, the one grown in in. Ecuador, Connecticut, Ecuador. So that's what I mean by that. So you're going to find this is a medium bodied cigar. And I won't get into all the flavors, let you get into the nuances of it. Um, it's, it's designed to be a medium bodied cigar that captures uh, a lot of flavor and brings out the filler that is uh, some Aganorsa and one other small producer, Aganorsa is a tobacco crower originally. They have a line of cigars also called Aganorsa. And then the wrappers from the Oliva family of Tampa. Uh, not to be confused with the Olivas that you might see as a cigar brand. Uh, the Oliva family of Tampa has been around over a hundred years. They originally started in Cuba. They're tobacco growers. They grow for many different people, uh, including Fuente and many others. Um, we use it in our Padilla Miami also that we make here in Miami. That was one of the top 25 cigars of the year. And uh, they they grow, in my opinion, the best Tabano out there um, in uh, in Ecuador. And then the filler, you've got a little bit of, uh, of Esseli. Um, you've got some Viso from uh, Jalapa. You've got some Lejero from Esteli. Um and you have uh, a little bit of uh, the region that's in between the two Esteli and the Jalapa Valley. Jalapa is on the border with Honduras. Esteli is further down. And in between that is a small uh, growing town called Condega. And each region has their own kind of uh, profile. Um, Esteli is a little fuller. It's more known for the Lejero. Lejero is, sits in the middle of the cigar. It's the slowest burning tobacco. It also has the highest nicotine and it kind of produces the punch. But when you're blending, you can make a strong cigar by adding more Lejero, but you are really gonna kill flavor. You're gonna get sensation. So you have to really be careful how you balance that. Um, stepping up uh, between Jalapa and Condega, uh, I mean, Esteli and Condega, sorry, between Jalapa and Esteli is Condega. And there, you will have kind of a hybrid uh, in profile of that power that you get from SLE, but more nuanced, toastyness to it. Jalapa is probably the most similar to Cuba. Um, has a rich, uh, sweet uh, profile to it. There's, it lends itself great to add uh, creaminess to a blend and things of that nature. So I'll let you decide what your thoughts on it. Uh, it's a little bit, and we'll get into all the uh, details of uh, of where it's hints of this or hints of that. Um, the uh, the name Midnight in Paris uh, comes from, uh, like I said, me smoking the cigar in Paris, but it also reminded me of uh, one of my favorite authors, and we've used uh, um, basically his, uh, sorry, here, I'll get a box here. Uh, the image 
here. There's actually a signed box by AJ who makes this blend called the Padilla 88th Anniversario, named for the 88th anniversary of uh, our father, Humberto Padilla, which is Cuba's uh, foremost poet. Long Google him. Um, and he was friends uh, with Hemingway, as you see there. I have another picture of our father with Hemingway. This was taken in Cuba and our father uh, having a book signed by Hemingway. They, that was in the town of Cojamar, a fishing village in Cuba, which that's the fishing village where uh, Hemingway was basically inspired um, to write The Old Man in the Sea, which won the uh, Nobel Prize for Literature and probably was one of the most better known books. Um, and when he won the Nobel Prize, he returned to that town not far from Havana uh, to uh, basically uh, thank the fishermen, but the fishermen also thanked him. They melted their props down, and uh, if you go to Cojomar in Cuba, there's a statue of Hemingway using the melted down props. Um, uh, and, you know, kind of uh, that day, that event was uh, a welcoming of him. He... Uh, he, meaning Hemingway, um, donated his Nobel Prize, and it's there in um, in Cuba today in a uh, church. Um, and the patron saint that um, that Cubans uh, uh, basically, how you call it, uh, protect um, them when they're uh, out there on the ocean. And obviously, a lot of Cubans have risked their lives to come. Uh, through the Straits of Florida to the U.S., uh, but he know it, donated there uh, La Caridad de Cobre, and uh, that's a little bit of background on it. If you have a chance to uh, read one of his books called A Movable Feast, uh, a little bit of background on his time in uh, in Paris before he he was famous, uh, living there with his first wife, Hadley Richardson and uh, what he experienced meeting with a fellow author he became very good friends with f scott fitzgerald um, who went to princeton uh, the town that i grew up in here in new jersey i was born in cuba left when i was six years old um, it's a long story there but it's it's a really nice book um short read and uh, a great read just a little bit about uh, his early life in paris and woody allen um Came out with a movie called uh, Midnight in Paris, I believe, in 2011, and it was a great, entertaining movie. And uh, this American scriptwriter goes to uh, Paris. I won't get too much into the details, but then the characters of Hemingway and, and Fitzgerald kind of show up in his uh, journey over there. Uh, Hemingway, I think, was uh, one of the first real travel writers. This is one, uh, A Dangerous Summer, which the last summer he spent. In Spain, the country that he says the beginning of this book, he loved uh, second to his own country, obviously the U.S. So that's a little bit of background on that. Um, I've used the Hemingway imagery because I've, I've enjoyed his work. I, I've enjoyed uh, uh, also somewhat what he, he was about in life. He was an outdoorsman, sportsman, uh, but also an intelligent man, well-read, obviously. And, and he did one thing which I think is... Uh, rare these days since we travel so much and it was a little bit rare during that time in the 20s 30s 40s even 50s um but he lived in cuba he lived among cubans uh he he didn't live in spain but he visited spain very much his first book the sun also rises a uh, big part of it takes part in uh, spain and so um you know yeah I'm, I'm a little bit inspired by that but one of the things hemingway was able to achieve was to have uh uh you know, a country, foreign country like Cuba and Spain really admire him. Um, you know, he really uh, uh, found uh, a love and passion for, for the Cuban people. And today, Hemingway, his home is there, Finca Vigia, not far from Havana. Uh, hopefully you can all visit one day if things change. Um, it, it's it's a museum. And uniquely enough, that museum is... is uh, is kept going. Uh, the, he left all his stuff when he left, when the revolution happened in 1959. He thought maybe that'd be a moment he'd be able to return, and he died in Ketchum, Idaho. He obviously committed suicide. And uh, today, that museum is basically kept up by the uh, John F. Kennedy Library in Boston. The U.S. government uh, was able to 
carve out a special thing because there is an embargo still with Cuba. Um, so his boat Pilar, uh, which he fished on, uh, is there next to the house. Many uh, celebrities also went to visit the, the home. And uh, even though Hemingway uh, was not a cigar smoker, there's one picture I've only seen of him with a cigar, uh, we tend to think of his kind of lifestyle as, as being associated with cigar freedom, uh, good life, uh, but an appreciation of, uh, you know, culture. Um, and, and to me, that's pretty much what this cigar is about. So, you know, I think, uh, if he was, Hemingway was a cigar smoker, he would probably give you the same advice. Don't, don't just sit there and try to overanalyze a cigar, you know, um, most of the time Cubans, uh, older Cubans especially we drink a Cuban coffee which is a version of an espresso dark Italian roast with a little bit more sugar and it pairs excellent with a cigar it's always been a big part of uh, my blending my father was a huge cigar smoker his family were tobacco growers in Cuba though so, you know enjoy a cigar the way a Cuban would or I think Hemingway would which is don't overanalyze it you know let the cigar take you there enjoy it be patient with it um you know and not only what you drink and or eat with the cigar but the company you keep i think also helps the cigar that's the cigar is a social it's a social product we make it we make a product that you know you can enjoy with friends but the cigar is not the star of the show you are you know and where you smoke it you know where they're on vacation or whatever is is just as important you know so you got to take the, the time to appreciate a cigar you don't you shouldn't be smoking a cigar in a hurry take your time to slowly uh light it burn it you're going to see that it has this closed foot so you're going to be able to taste the wrapper you know and and then it starts building and you'll see how the cigar builds and how it transitions so uh thank you to standard and twain thank you you guys for uh trying out our cigars um, appreciate it uh, in 20 years now coming on 21 years uh, with the brand uh, like I said my family has a history back in Cuba in the industry uh, it was part of uh, my grandparents passion that's what they did and my father traveled the world always with a cigar and I guess I caught the bug hopefully you will too enjoy a cigar midnight in Paris maybe uh, kind of reminisce about uh, going to Paris. If you haven't been, I recommend it, no matter what anybody says. Paris is always a good idea. So, or as Hemingway said, if you are lucky enough to have lived in Paris as a young man, uh, you take it with you for the rest of your life because Paris is a movable feast. So, enjoy the cigar. Take care.